Welcome back dear students to video number 2 for standard 7 science chapter number 9 heat. In the previous video we discussed two types or two modes of transfer of heat conduction and convection. Let us continue with the third one which is radiation. Light a candle and stand it upright. Hold your hands on its two sides at some distance from the candle. Bring them closer. What do you feel? Obviously, you will feel some warmth from the candle. The sun is millions of kilometers away from us. There is no air between the sun and the earth. As the Earth's atmosphere is only a thin layer of air close to the Earth's surface. Then how does the heat of the sun reach us? This heat is transferred in the absence of a medium. The transfer of heat that takes place in this way without a medium is called radiation. When heat rays fall on an object, a part of the heat is absorbed by the object and a part of it is reflected. The ability of a substance to absorb heat depends on its color and also its intrinsic properties. My dear students, you will study about this a little later and also in higher classes that dark colors absorb heat. And white colors or lighter colors, they reflect heat. Also, object or substances or objects which have outer surfaces which are smooth and shiny, they reflect heat. And if the outer surface is rough and uneven, then they absorb heat. You will study about it in higher classes. Now the next experiment the apparatus required is two aluminium tins of the same size, two small glasses, water, thermometers, black paint etc. Procedure what we are going to do is paint the outer surface of one tin with black paint and let it dry. Then in both tins place one glass each filled with water at the same temperature. Cover the tins with lids. Keep them in the sun or sunlight for 2 hours. Now measure the temperature of the water in the glasses in the two tins. What is the reason for difference in temperature? Just now we discussed or uh, I was telling you about the darker the color, the more heat is absorbed. So what you will observe is the tin in which is painted black the water inside that glass will be the temperature of it will be more compared to the other glass that is because the black paint absorbed heat good and bad conductors of heat place a steel spoon a copper strip or rod a divider from the geometry box, a pencil and a plastic ruler in a glass beaker. Pour hot water into the beaker, wait for a while, then touch the outer end of the objects, of each of the objects. Record your observations in the table. My dear students, you can do this particular activity at home, but in the presence of an adult. I repeat, in the presence of an adult, that is your father or mother. Now record your observations in this particular table. You have to write what object you used and how hot is the outer end. Very hot, hot, warm, as cool as the air around. Record your observations. You can do this table in your notebook.
Some substances are good conductors of heat while some are bad conductors of heat. Heat is easily conducted through a copper strip or pot but not through plastic or wood. We can hold a glass tumbler or china cup full of hot tea easily in our hand, but not a steel or copper cup if the same tea is poured into them. Now we are going to dis study something interesting and that is expansion and contraction of solid substances. So to see this particular expansion and contraction of solid substances, we need three things and that is a metal ring. As you can see over here, this is a metal ring, a metal ball and a burner. Now what we are supposed to do is, first we will check before heating, the ball just passes through the ring. As you can see, this ball has passed through the ring. We have not heated the ball. Now, when we heat the ball, when we heat the ball, this ball does not pass through the ring. The reason is the ball is made up of metal. So, we know that metal expands on heating. As a result, and the ring is as it is. We are, not, we are not heating the ring. We are heating the ball. So, the ball does not pass through the ring upon heating because it expands. Then, we remove the heat and we cool down the ball. So, upon cooling, the ball passes through the ring again. So, once the ball is cooled down, this ball passes through the ring. So, what does this small activity prove? It proves that solid substances expand on heating and contract on cooling. Expansion and contraction of solid substances due to heat. The experiment tells us that metals expand on heating and contract on cooling. Solids expand due to heat and come back to the original state if heat is removed. However, the extent to which different solids expand is different. That means iron, copper, aluminium will not expand at the same rate. The rate of expansion or the extent of expansion will be different for each particular substance. Next is expansion and contraction of liquids due to heat. This time what we need is a 500 milliliters conical flask, two hold rubber stopper, glass tube, measuring ruler, thermometer, stand, wire gauze, burner, graph paper etc. I will show you quickly I will show you how the apparatus looks like. So, so this is our uh, setup. There is a tripod stand, there is a burner, a conical flask inside which there is water. There is two hold glass tube, one thermometer and one hollow glass, two hold glass uh, rubber stopper one hollow glass tube and one thermometer feet fitted inside. So, let's see the procedure. Fill the conical flask completely with water. Insert the glass tube and the thermometer in the two holes of the stopper and fit it to the conical flask. Heat the water and with the help of the ruler record the water level in the glass tube after every 2 degrees Celsius rise in temperature. Take about 10 readings. So, what we are doing is, we are heating this water and we are recording the temperature. After every 2 degree rise in temperature, this is, we are recording the, the height of the water with the help of a ruler. So, we are doing both. Observe what happens when heating is stopped. 
so this way we are going to take readings and we are going to take readings when the heating is stopped as well and we can also draw a graph to show the change in water level as the temperature rises you will see that the water level rises when water is heated and the water level comes down when it as the water cools or when the heat is removed when a liquid is heated the distances between its particles increase and its volume too increases this is called expansion of liquids when its temperature falls the liquid contracts so that was expansion of and contraction of liquid now we are discussing expansion and contraction of gases due to heat this time we need glass bottle balloon hot water fix a balloon at on the mouth of a glass bottle hold this bottle in hot water what happens we know that there is a uh, a particular there are gases inside that particular bottle so when we hold the bottle in hot water this bottle becomes heated and inside that what gas what gases are there the, those gases become heated and the balloon the volume of gas increases on heating this is called expansion of gas on the other hand on removing heat the volume of gas decreases this is called contraction of gas and we will see that the balloon will become in slightly the balloon will infl uh, inflate when the hot water is hot and when the temperature decreases the balloon will the size of the balloon will decrease a little i'll repeat the volume of gases increases on heating this is called expansion of gas on the other hand on removing heat the volume of gas decreases this is called contraction of gas the next what we are going to discuss my dear students is a thermos flask how does it work what does it look like what are what things are present inside and this particular thermos flask is also known as divar flask so let us see this is a double walled flask as you can see this is single and this is another one so double walled flask it consists of two glass tubes one inside the other with gap between them and this gap is sealed the surfaces of both the tubes are made shiny by a silver coating there is a reason for this there is a reason for the silver coating because it reflects heat which uh, we know that uh, the shiny substances reflect heat so in order for heat to retain inside this particular glass tubes are coated with shiny silver coating so that heat is reflected and it stays inside so here we have as shown here this particular surface is silvered surface and also this surface is silvered surface the air between the two tubes is removed to create vacuum in between these two tubes in between these two tubes whatever air is there that air is removed so that heat does not pass through convection so we are eliminating transfer of heat through convection by removing the air and also there are two separate tubes so heat due to conduction is also eliminated we are we are stopping heat due to conduction and convection 
there is a protective jar of metal or plastic outside the tubes for the protection of the flask pieces of sponge or rubber are fixed between the outer jar and the flask and you can see the outer substance the outer part of the uh, flask is made of metal or plastic for the protection of these inner tubes because inner tubes are glass tubes if you have seen old thomas flasks this is exactly what how the old thomas flasks look like the outer part is either metal or plastic and if you peep inside you will see glass tubes so to protect that glass the outer part is metal or plastic and if you see there is a rubber stopper over here so that this these particular glass tubes are in proper they are held properly so piece of sponge or rubber are fixed between the outer jar and the flask so that the tubes are held properly inside now when a hot substance is placed in thermos flask you see inside hot liquid we are discussing hot first we can discuss cold later so when hot substance is placed inside a thermos flask the heat going out gets reflected due to the shiny surface of the inner tube so first when heat tries to escape the shiny surface reflecting surface it stops the heat from going out hence heat is radiated neither conduction nor convection of the heat occurs because of vacuum now in between these two tubes there's vacuum so conduction and convection does not take place as a result heat is not transferred to the outer cooler region and is retained inside for a long time still a little heat is lost from around the lid and by a small amount of conduction through the glass so a little tiny amount is lost through here and through the glass therefore the hot substance does not remain as hot after a few hours that is after 2 2 or 3 hours that means if we keep this for a longer time the hot substance does not remain as hot compared to how it was because a little amount of heat escapes from the lid area and from the glass tubes the actual glass substance now the same thing is applicable for cold liquids also the outside heat heat cannot enter inside because of these various barriers which are placed like the outer coating then the vacuum then the shiny substances so the outside heat does heat does not enter inside and if whatever liquid cold liquid we have stored inside remains cold so this is the functioning of the thermos flask next my dear students there are certain questions some interesting questions which uh, i have tried to answer so let's see what what they are why do we wear woolen clothes in winter woolen clothes have fine pores filled with air wool and air both are bad conductors of heat therefore in winter we wear woolen clothes as they check the conduction of heat from the body to the surroundings and thus keep the body warm why do we use white clothes in summer and dark clothes in winter we prefer white colored clothes in summer because white color is poor absorber of heat so they keep us cool during summer on the other hand during winter we prefer black or dark colored clothes as black or dark color absorbs heat quickly and keeps us comfortably warm during winter why is there a gap at the joints of rails and of cement bridges there is a gap between railway tracks because in summer even during afternoons 
due to excessive heat and friction iron expands and thus fill, fills the gap whereas during winter sometimes even during at night times due to cool weather the gap retains due to contraction of iron in order to avoid mishaps or accidents such an arrangement is done the same is true in the case of bridges which have an inner skeleton made up of heavy metals like iron and steel what is meant by thermoway thermoway is something which does not allow heat to escape and keeps warm thermoway can refer to containers clothing or any substance that keeps the insides warm with this we end this particular chapter please read the textbook and notes will be forwarded to you a little later thank you for watching have a nice day